Mavis v'achayim b'yad Allah. You can literally kill a person and also give him life with the power of speech. Wherever you get your podcasts from, or our own website, prismoftorah.org. This is the Prism of Torah with Rabbi Saf Aaron Prisman. Shalom uvrocha. In this week's parsha, Parashas Tazria, we know the Torah teaches us about all the cases when a person has tsaras, a type of leprosy. And I want to elaborate on a certain nekuda, which is the following. Rashi says on the pasuk, Perik Yud Gimel pasuk base, when it says that if a person sees blotch on his skin, which seems to be potential leprosy, tsaras, so he has to come to the koyen, to Aaron koyen, or to one of his kids, the koanim. And says Rashi that it's a gzerus akosuv. The Torah teaches us that the only way it's decreed as a tsaras, which is a tuma nega, a nega that's tame, and now you have to go and you're considered impure because of that, and hence you have to go through the whole process of becoming pure again, is only decreed once the Kohen says you're tame. And based on that, we can ask a question, what is the Havana in that? What's the deeper idea behind the fact that no matter what, the only way you are decreed a Kohen, it could be you're a huge Talmud Chacham. You learned the topic inside out and it's clear to you that this is Tame. Yet, no, you only become Tame when the Kohen with his mouth says you are Tame. Ad kerekach, that if a Kohen doesn't know Torah so well and doesn't know the laws of when it is a Tzaras, when it is Nechshav, leprosy, when it's not, it's still it's only considered leprosy even when he says it. And how will he know to say it? Because someone that knows how to learn will tell him. But it's only when it comes out of the mouth of the Koyan to say that you are Tame, you are now decreed to be Tame. And the question is, why is it the mouth of the Koyan that makes the final decision? And it's based on the mouth of the Koyan, his speech, that now you have Chalois Tuma. At that second, you become Tame. What is it about the mouth of the Koyan? So I would like to suggest the following answer. We all know that the root cause for a person getting tzaras leprosy has to do with speech. And we know Chazal teaches us, and the Chafetz Chaim elaborates on this topic, and he has several sfarim about it, that the root cause is because you used your speech in an improper fashion, such as Lashon Hara, to speak badly about someone. It could be you're speaking the truth. It doesn't matter. HaKadosh Baruch Hu expects a very high level of a relationship between a Yid and his fellow Jew. But the real root of this idea is that we have to understand the power of speech. As Shlomo HaMelech teaches us, HaMavis V'achayim B'yad Alashon in Mishlei, he says that you can literally kill a, pe- a person and also give him life with the power of speech. A lot of times we know HaKadosh Baruch Hu creates a world in such a way that the same mechanism, it's just the, the, the same tool can create an unbelievable thing or Chas Vashal, the opposite. We see in personalities as well, you see some people have an unbelievable effect on things, but it can go either way. When we are talking about this concept that the mouth of a person with the power of a speech, he can create death to a certain degree or also give life to another person, that's physically speaking. But there's also the realm of spirituality. A person can use his mouth for its elevated purpose, which is to daven to Hashem, to daven for a friend, to do Torah and mitzvahs with his mouth by learning Torah, by davening. And by that itself, he creates life to angels, angels that are protecting Klal Yisrael. And there's many, many Sfarim in Kabbalah that the Arizal said and the Reb Chaim Vital wrote about how many tikkunim a person does with the power of speech. All the olamos, all the worlds, not just our world, which is called the world of Asiya, but all the worlds above us, that are, all are a trigger to give sustenance to our world. It's all based on the mouth of a yid. What a Jew can do with his mouth, and he can go either way, chas v'shalom. He can also go to, in a negative fashion. Just like Chazal tell us in numerous places, that a person uses his mouth in the wrong way, it creates malachei chabala, evil angels, which is held against us. How important it is for us to understand this concept is to use our mouths in the correct fashion. It's better to be silent by far than to use it in a negative sense, because it creates a lot of damage. We're all in the same boat. And when one person uses his mouth in the incorrect fashion, even a machshava, but for sure dibu, even a thought of a yid has an effect. But when a person uses his mouth in the incorrect fashion, he's 
to a certain extent, making a hole in the in sinking the ship that we all are metaphorically speaking a part of. We know that the mouth is what separates between us and the behemoths. It also is something that separates us and the goyim because with the kli, the best kli we have for our wars is davening Tashem. As we say, and there's many psukim that symbolizes this idea, the goyim use their horses and their carriages, but we, but our koyach, the koyach of Yaakov, is through Teira and Tfila. Yes, we do our ishtadus physically speaking, but we should know the unbelievable powers of what we can do with our mouth. We don't need to get to Reb Chaim Vital to understand this concept. The Chafetz Chaim himself in his Akdama to his Sefer Chafetz Chaim and also in Shmir Salashun Shal has Chira Perek Zayn. He goes in length to explain the blemish, the pgam a person does and can do with the koach of his dibul, the power of speech that Gadish Bulhu gave him. Based on this vital concept to lead us through life, we can perhaps get a glimpse of understanding why Dafka this idea of getting impure because the coin decides you have leprosy, tsaras, and you have to go through your purification process is because it is to penetrate and explain to us and symbolize the idea, the power of speech. Yes, it's now the power of speech of the koyin that Hashem is showing us. He has the power through the speech to make you impure. This is also a tikkun for the pagam. The blemish that was created was al yadei dibu. So, so now the tikkun also, to rectify this idea, we also show that through the mouth what can be done and we, we start and it triggers the purification process. Now we're trying to recreate what this person by speaking Lashon Ho, what he, what he ruined. Now we're trying to reconstruct that by the Koch of Dibu. By the way, open brackets, the idea and the concept of Ayn Hara is a similar concept. It's with Machshava. Dibu is even more extreme. But Ayn Hara has a huge effect because a negative Machshava of a Yid can literally negatively impact others. Without getting into for, further detail, but a person can check out the Gemara Baba Metzia Daf Kuf Zayin Amud Beis. It needs Hezber, but but stamp shot. It says at 99 out of 100 people that die, they die because the Ayn Horo. So we see the extreme impact a machshava and Kalba Choymer Adibur can have on a person. Close bracket. This not only acts, this idea that with the mouth of the coin, with the power of speech, he can declare a person to be impure, which will start the purification process. It's not only tikkun for the pgam, but it's also something that can teach the person that said Lashon Horo and bring into his heart this concept, wow, I better be careful. I better be careful about the potential of what I can do with my mouth. We also know that once a person uses his mouth and something comes out of his mouth, it's very, very difficult to bring it back and to undo the damage that was done. And hence, we have to think twice before we say something that has a negative impact. We have to do our best to ensure that this holy thing, the kli that Hashem gave us, the mouth, we should use it for kedusha, tahara, to give life physically speaking by saying a good word to another Yid. And the biggest chas that a person could do for the world and for the Jewish nation is by using his mouth, holding back not to say negative, sul merah, but way more than that, aset tov and create these amazing angels that will protect Klal Yisrael. How much do we need this during this time period all over the world, Jewish people all over the world, not only in Israel. And why is it Tafka through the Kohanim that have, that have to portray this idea? Because it's bischus. What Aaron, the Kohen Gadol, did, that when HaKadosh Baruch Hu brought down the fire to take his two kids, he didn't say anything. He held back. He had this koach to hold back. And that was given over in the spiritual DNA to his kids. As it says, Vayidoim Aaron. We saw this in last week's Parsha. And through that, he merited to get this schus, to do the tikkun through the mouth. The mouth, that's a holy, a holy tool that Hashem gave us, that by that we can use to always give Klal Yisrael Shefa, brocho ve'atzloch, and everything we do is through our mouth. How important it is, especially if you want a schus for someone, you should have it in mind and refrain from saying bad when you have the yetzara to say bad. Or the chilufin, a person can think about a person's name that's not doing so well and you want him to get healthier and say, ah, oh, I'm going to say something good. I'm going to for him. I'm going to say tehillim for him. We know that has ripple effects for the positive. Before we end with, before we end with a story, I want to finish off with this Incredible concept. Part of the process of the purification, the purification process for this Mitzvah, the person that had leprosy, is at the end of the day, he has to bring two birds. That's what the Torah commanded. Shtei to become pure. One we shecht and one we let free. 
surely there's a deep concept about this idea. What, what is that concept? So Rashi already tells us in the Gemara and Erechin, also in the, in the Chumash, because we know that these negoim, this type of leprosy, blemishes in the skin, come because a person spoke Lash and Horo, and that comes from that just ch- chittering and talking all the time about nonsense, and it leads to talking about people. And hence, the, when you look at two birds next to each other, it sounds like they're always yapping to each other and talking. So that represents that idea. However, what's a deep understanding and explanation for why we shecht one bird and one we let free? So there's the Mordeke Marsha, the Marsha in Chudushei Agados in Erchin over there, and Daf Tetzayin Amud Beis says a beautiful idea, and it's based on what we said now. On the one hand, we know the power of speech, both physically and spiritually. It's unbelievable. On the other hand, we know the negative effect if we use our mouths in an incorrect fashion. Hence, the one we shecht, the bird we shecht, is representing when a person uses his mouth in a negative way. And hence, we shecht it. We want it to stop. On the other hand, the other bird that we let free, that's coming to hint. That's coming to hint to us about, yes, let it free and use the mouth for the positive things, for saying a good word to your friend, for, for learning Torah, for doing things for Bikdusha. And continue that. Chas v'shalom to shech that bird. That bird represents the daving that we do, the tehillim that we do for every situation. At the end of the day, there's one thing clear that's coming out of this concept. It's the importance of realizing that what makes a big difference between us and the goyim is what we can use our mouths for. Between us and behemas. Behemas don't have das. And das, the ability to communicate with one another and speak things out, is through the mouth. So it is so important that we will not act like animals, but rather use our mouths for kedusha. Also, the goyim use their mouths. But our tool, our sword, to, so to speak, is using our mouths for kedusha, for tahara, for toire, for tefillah, for tehillim. Yeratzon, that we realize now we're coming up to nearing Pesach. Pesach, everything you see, this idea through Pesach. It's a theme through Leila Seder. As everything is with the mouth. Pesach is coming from the word Pesach, a mouth that speaks. What are we speaking? Kedusha, the whole night. Kol sholo amar, shloisha dvarim eilu. Everything is speech. We're using our speech to the element of Kedusha. In Mir Hashem, this place will be a tikkun and will protect Kral Yisrael from all our oivim, sheyun nigafim aleinu. like to end. Actually, before I end, I just want to, before I end with the story, I want to bring down that Nefesh Achaim also, Shal Aleph Perik Yud Gimel, says this concept and he brings a beautiful drasha and he says that in Bereshit it says, V'yi Adam Nefesh Chaya, which means, that the person, the Odom, will be the nefesh chaya, it'll give life, chaya, also from the word lichyot, for all the worlds above us, all the oilamus. And that's all dependent on the Odom, us, al yedei ruach memalela. What does that mean? Ruach memalela, Unkula says, that that's the koach of the dibu. The power of speech that we have, if we use it correctly, we give sustenance and life to all the worlds. We have to live with that concept. And what in a responsibility we have to use our mouths in the correct fashion. I'd like to quickly end with a short story that brings the point home. It's an amazing story in this sefer that my wife has called Aderabe. And the story goes like this. In the, in the sefer called Hasidim, it says the following, Hasidim Esaprim is called, there's the following story about the Admoi, Rabbi Aaron Agodol Mikarlin, that went one day on a carriage to visit his Rabbi, the Magid Mimezrich. He was together with a bunch of people that had their own horse. For some reason, they're all in the same carriage. And they were going together. And they're called the Gloinim. They're also drivers of carriages. But for some reason, they were all taken to one place together with him. As they're all sitting together, they one by one start going through every person in the city. And they start speaking about him and saying all the negative things they can think of him. And he should be better in this and better in that. He, he couldn't take it anymore. He, he knew the negative effect they're having. However, what is he going to say? He realizes he's outnumbered by them. So what is he going to do? So he decides, like Chazal tells us, Chafetz Chaim tells us, he should quickly switch topics to something that's going to catch their attention. And by doing that, you'll get them to stop, to refrain from speaking about all these Lashon Hoa and all these negative things. So, so he did. And he realized, oh, if they like to horses, so let's talk about horses. He goes, which horse do you think is better? Horse type A, horse type B, whatever. All these names are written here. I'm not going to waste your time telling you the names of horses and how do you brush them and what do you have to be delicate? What about their eyes? What about this? How do you ensure that their hooves don't get don't rot, etc., etc.? They all got excited. You saw the spark in their eyes and they kept talking, kept talking. 
Eventually, they got to the city that they needed to get to. They got to Mezrich. And because a lot of people heard already the amazing news that this big Rav was going to come to Mezrich, the Admoir Mikarlin, thousands of people came to him. Suddenly, all the Eglonim, they're called, the other horse drivers will call them, they're like, what? What is this? You're a big Rebbe? Why did you spend time talking about horses with us? Why did you do such a thing? So Rabbi Avon Mikarlin answers them, I saw that you used your mouths to kill people. I said, it's better that you kill horses and the people will stay alive. Have a good Shabbos. This concludes another episode of the Prism of Torah. Thank you for tuning in today. We hope you enjoyed it and learned something valuable. If you did, please subscribe to the podcast and give a five-star rating. You can also find this podcast wherever you get your podcasts or our own website, prismofterror.com, where we have a full archive of all our past episodes. We would like to thank Yona Veffa for the recording equipment and Ellie Podcast Productions for handling all our post-podcast productions. Join us next week for another enlightening conversation on the Prism of Terror.